Caro Presidente, fratelli e sorelle, buon pomeriggio. Mr. President, brothers and sisters, good afternoon. È un vero piacere per me presentare stasera la conferenza dell'amico dottor José Foglia che ci parlerà di neurofisiologia della compassione. It is with great pleasure that I introduce my friend Dr. José Foglia who will speak about the neurophysiology of compassion. Lo seguiremo nel suo approccio rigorosamente scientifico in grado di mostrarci come funzionano i processi neurofisiologici che portano agli stati della nostra coscienza e alla compassione. We will learn through a scientific procedure how the neurophysiological activity which determines our state of consciousness functions. Il dottor José Foglia è nato in Uruguay, dove è cresciuto ed ha studiato fra Montevideo e Punta del Este. Dottor Foglia was born and educated in Punta del Este and Montevideo. Si è laureato in medicina a Montevideo, specializzandosi in chirurgia generale ed emoterapia. He graduated in 1979 as a doctor from the Medical School of Montevideo, Uruguay, and specialized in general surgery and chemotherapy. Successivamente si è specializzato su questi temi anche in Francia, a Montpellier e in Italia presso l'Università Cattolica a Roma, dove ha risieduto in questa città fino al 1996. Tornato a Montevideo, ha conseguito un'ulteriore laurea in psico-neuroendocrinologia nel 2012. He then continued his studies on these subjects in France and in Italy at the Catholic University in Rome, where he lived until 1999. On returning to Montevideo, he obtained a degree in psychoneuroendocrine immunology in 2012. Si è iscritto alla Società Teosofica nel 1978 e si è interessato agli insegnamenti di Giddu Krishnamurti, compiendo anche alcuni viaggi in India e decidendo di lavorare in vari paesi, studiando le diverse culture e le antiche civilizzazioni. He joined the Theosophical Society in 1978 and became interested in the teachings of Chittu Krishnamurti, whom he met on his trips to India. Following these visits, he decided to travel to various countries to learn about other cultures and ancient civilizations. Ha pubblicato anche una monografia sul tema neurofisiologia della meditazione. Dal 2002 al 2010 ha compiuto un lavoro di ricerca ed ha pubblicato il libro Homo Lux. He published a monograph on the neurophysiology of meditation from 2002 to 2010, he researched and published a book entitled Homo Lux. Attualmente il dottor José Foglia lavora sulla ricerca del potenziale umano e sullo sviluppo di un nuovo approccio alla medicina. Currently, Dr. Foglia is working on investigating the human potential and developing a new approach to medicine. La parola a te, dottor Foglia. Please, brother José. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's an honor and pleasure for me to be with you. He's a, a really friend. He talks of me a lot. I don't know if everything is, is right 
he has said. I think he, he said too much. But I saw my <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, you have the warmest greeting from the section from Uruguay. What we try to do this afternoon is to, to have a scientific approach of our subjects, the subjects which we love to learn, the theosophists. But uh, now, will we have a very reductionist approach? Hmm? We will talk only about the physical body. Hmm? And uh, we will see everything what happened into our brain. Hmm? We are the reception of all these energies coming from the universe, hmm? and our brain is the receptor of all these bits of information. And we will try to to see what happened into our brain, how our brain process all this information. Hmm? So, the epistemology of our talk. Hmm? Now, epistemology, what it is, is the, um, the knowledge, how we can reach a knowledge. So, how we can reach the knowledge now, neurophysiology of compassion, and we will take the knowledge coming from the psychoneuroendocrine immunology, hmm? here, PNE, hmm? is a recently discipline in medicine who takes these four systems together, the psychis, the neuro, neuro systems, the endocrine systems, and the immune systems, all together. It not consider the duality mind and body. It consider that we are a unity. And what is happening in our psyche is it's hap it's happens. Hello? Yes? It's work? Yeah. It's happening at the same time in the neuro systems in the endocrine systems and in the immune systems, all together. They are working all together, okay? Will we use also the information, the knowledge coming from the neuroscience? Hmm? Neuroscience was studied in the nervous systems. And also the information, the knowledge coming for our self-observation. And this is the most important of the three what we can understand by ourselves, observing what's happened into our mind. Hmm? This is the most important. We, we can understand, we can, the comprehension of ourselves. Hmm? So, the, the comprehension of the, our brain, how it functions, and its potential also, is one of the three points of the theosophies. Eh? the research of the potential of the human being, what we are, and the law of the nature. So, will we consider all this scientific point of view? Hmm? And what is the most important of everything is our self-knowledge, hmm? what we are, exactly what we are. Hmm? We are a nervous system. So we will not consider the other part that probably we are also are. Will we have a very reductionist approach? The physical body. Hmm? We create our this culture, and the culture that mankind has created came from our brain. And all what is good or bad now is our responsibility. And our brain is now functions correctly, properly. We consider that the brain, the psychis, not the brain, the psychis of the mankind is serious sick. And we can see what's happening in the world right now. There are war everybody, everywhere, violence every, everywhere, and something has happened, and something is going worse and worse and worse. So, we must consider 
the physical body, because the physical body is the responsible of all what has happened now in the world. Hmm? Because the world what we have now, because we are in the third world now, hmm? is not the consequence of the spiritual field. It's consequence of the physical body. Our physical body is working wrong. So will we consider the nervous systems? The nervous systems is a central nervous system here, hmm? which is composed from the brain, and the spinal cord. This is the central nervous system. And the perif peripheral nervous systems with the somatic division and the autonomic division. What we see very fast all this. Hmm? Somatic division, remember, is the movement, the motor nerves who move the body, and also the sensitive nerves who inform the brain what has happened in all our body, hmm? the sensitive uh, nerves and the autonomic division works with the organs, hmm? the heart, the lungs, uh, and all the digestive, etc. Hmm? Controls our uh, systems, the other systems. This is autonomic division. So this is our central uh, nervous systems: the brain, hmm? the cerebellum, the trunk here and the spinal cord. Eh? All the information comes here in the brain from the external environment and also from the internal environment. So we are a nervous system. We will consider now for a while that we are just a nervous system. Mm? Okay? So here we have the brain, I don't find this, okay, it's up here. Here is the left hemisphere, there are two hemispheres, the left hemisphere here, the right hemisphere. Hmm? Here is a bridge, the corpus callosa, where both hemispheres are connected and share the information. Well, we see later what happens. Here we have the cerebellum, hmm? the trunk, and the spinal cord. This is the right hemisphere, and this our is the left hemisphere. Hmm? And during all the last years, they were studying the different areas of the neocortex. This different color here with this number are different area of our neo neocortex. All the information comes until this neocortex and this information here is where it makes conscience. Okay? And here is the corpus callosa. Here we see. Hmm? Here, corpus callosa. is the bridge between both hemispheres. Hmm? So, Will we see not in details, but for example, I will show you this part here, hmm? 4039, this part also here and here. These are very important for the Homo sapiens today because all these areas process the verbal language. Hmm? And will we see later how important is for the human being the verbal language. Mm? We create the verbal language. The verbal language is a creation of the mankind, of the human being. Mm? It's our culture who creates this. Mm? And here we have the peripheral nervous systems, all the nerves coming from the brain to the body, mm? inform the body the, all the movements, and the body inform what is happening in the body and goes up here, all the information in the brain. So the information is coming down in all the body and coming up, informing the brain what is happens. 
Mm? So this is our central nervous system here. Here is where we are. And we have all the information from the universe. Mm? And we have all the information of our body. So this is a very simple to show. The nervous system is in the center, here. Mm? The external environment, the universe. The sensory nerves, mm? bringing the information to the nervous systems, and how the nervous systems can move in the external environment. With the motor neurons, hmm? we can move, we can change places, we can change, sorry, we can change our nervous system from one part to another part. Hmm? But is this what controls all our body? Hmm? And also with the internal environment, we know very well what is happening in our body. If we feel good, bad, anxiety, sorrow, happiness, mm, a pain, etc. We are informed everything what is happening in our body mm, with the sensory nerves, neurons also informing the central nervous systems and also the nervous system with the motor neurons move the whole systems, our heart, our lungs, mm, our digestive, uh, the stomach, intestines, the liver, etc. Mm, they move all the organs. Mm. So how can, how can the brain be informed from the external environment? It's with the sensory organs. Mm. We can know how our environment smell, looks like, the color, the sounds, how we test, mm? and one, we can feel also what the environment touch us. Mm? We have five sensory organs, eh? the taste, the view, the touch, the hearing, and the smell. Mm? And all these sense organs are informing for our external environment. And each energy has a specialized nerve endings. Hmm? For example, for the vision, the, the, the spectrum of the, of the light can enter into the brain because there are here two specialized nerves here. The roads and the cone, nerves endings here in the eye, who can inform the brain how our environment looks like in color and in light. And also a different kind of energy, the sounds, hmm, comes into the brain because there are no other nerve endings, very different, who can process the sounds and inform the brain which kind of sounds are in, in our environment. And also very different nerve endings here to the smell and also for the taste. And they are very different also for the touch. So the, these, those are very specialized nerve endings to inform the different kinds of energies because we are surrounded us of very different kinds of energies. And each energy have its specialized nerve ending. Hmm? So this is, for example, the, the retina. Mm, the retina, I will not enter in details because it, it becomes too heavy, too boring, and too long. But to see how complex it is. Eh? Because for us it's so simple to open the eyes and to see everything. But what has happened into our brain is very, very complex. Each color has a specialized nerve ending here to red, blue, and green, mm, those are the cone. And the roads who can detect brightness or darkness. Mm, and all this process comes together in the brain and we can see, and it's so simple for us, but it's so complex, yeah, actually. The same for the sounds. Yeah? The same for the sounds. All the sounds here in the env external environment comes here and must be, have a process 
to become an electrical impulse. Because all the information is transformed in electrical impulse. Hmm? And all this process is done by the uh, organ, uh, sense organs. Hmm? The smell also, hmm? the air into in our nose here, and here you have the endings of the nerves and can detect the different smell in the air. And also for the taste, hmm? for different kinds of uh, taste, bitter, sweet, salty and uh, sour. Hmm? And we, when we eat, and he, that, that tastes very good, we, have, we find different kinds of taste. Tasting? Yes, tasting? Uh, okay. So, there are different nerve endings, processing the different kinds of, of uh, energy coming in our mouth. Hmm? And also in the touch. Uh, there are very specialized nerve endings in our skin, who can process the uh, for example, the pressure here, this, the pressure, or pain, they are very different here, this, this way, the pain, or the touch, hmm? here, the touch, for example, hmm? sorry, or temperature, it's cold, it's warm, how is outside, hmm? different kinds of nerve endings. So all this energy comes in the brain, but like an electrical impulse. And the brain, what process is just electrical impulse. Bits of information transforming in electrical impulse. Hmm? And what is the unity of, the, of our nervous systems? It's the neuron. This is a neuron. We are millions and millions and millions of neurons and connection between neurons. Is that what we are as a physical body? Just neurons, millions of millions of neurons connected, sharing the information, transforming the information. Mm -hmm. And this is the unity. This is those as the neurons. Mm -hmm. Neurons informing, they are together. They don't touch one body of the neurons to the other body, just these are connections with the dendrites here, are the dendrites. Hmm? And these dendrites transmit the electrical impulse from one neuron to the other, and this neuron inform the other neurons. And that's what is happens all the time in each instant in our life. Hmm? And this image, I, I like it very much because can be the universe here. We can see galaxy or we can see here stars and planets and so on. It can be the universe, it can be the image of our universe. And can be also be the image of our brain. Neurons here, other neurons here, energy coming from our neurons to another neurons. So, the message of this image is that it's not separation be between the universe and our brain. What has happened outside, it's happened in the same time inside. So it's not different between outside or inside. It's just a concept. Inside, outside, it's just a concept. Um, low or high, the same, are just concept. Hmm? All the universe is in our brain. And what it is, there are connections, connections with neurons. Here is a connection be between a dendrite and axon, and they share the information. Hmm? It's two different ways this transmission is chemical and electrical. Hmm? A port is chemical with neurotransmitter. There are many kinds of neurotransmitter, dopamine, serotonin, adrenaline, etc. Many, many different kinds of neurotransmitter. And this neurotransmitter inform the other port here is a dendrite. And this is an axon. Hmm? Here we see a neuron. 
the body, the axon, the information coming to another, another neuron. This is the dendrite for the other neuron. And this is what happens between two neurons. Neurotransmitter come here in this receptor hmm, and inform the other neurons. That is happening all the time in our brain. So we are electrical impulse also. We can say that we are also just electrical impulse. Hmm? We will see very, very fast uh, how these nervous systems uh, become complex in time. Uh, 700, years ago, 700 million years ago appears this net, hmm? this net. Before it was just a net. The nervous system has no brain, has no central nervous system. It was just a net. But this, this net can process a lot of information. Hmm? This is how appear 700 million years ago. And then this net becomes more complex and appear with the worm, hmm, the first nervous systems, and then becomes new beings more complex and even the nervous systems, the central nervous systems becomes more and more complex because can process more and more energies, more bits of information. Hmm. Here we have a, a worm, and then during time, these nervous systems become our nervous systems, very, very complex. Yeah? Here we are. Hmm. And that takes from here to here uh, 700 million years, more or less. The beginning, hmm? the beginning here, when life appeared on the planet, 3,500 million years ago, the first cell, and takes a lot of millions of millions of years to become a little bit complex. And 350 millions of years ago appeared the fish. Then the amphibious, goes out from the water and started to walk on the earth and there appears the reptile hmm? and here we have the first uh, interesting brain if you can say the reptilian brain will we see later the reptilian brain hmm? reptilian brain appears more or less uh, 300 million years ago. The next steps is when the mammalian brain appears, the mammisphere. Hmm? This is another, I lost here, another interesting brain, the mammalian brain, we will see later. And from here appears 200 million years ago, the Monkeys, for 40 million years ago, the planets are with monkeys. 20 million years ago, the big monkeys. And then we started to become what we are, the Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens appears in the planet here 160,000 years ago. And so the brain becomes more and more and more complex. And here we have the three steps. The first steps, the reptilian brain here in red. This is our reptilian brain. We have this reptilian brain. It's for our survivor. Hmm? Then here we have the mammalian brain. Well, in yellow, I can find it. I don't know what's happening here. This is our mammalian brain. 
And this is our neocortex brain, the human brain. This is our human brain. But we have the three types of different brain. Hmm? The reptilian brain, our survival brain. Hmm? It doesn't think, it just cares us from the dangers. Hmm? And we keep all the reaction from this reptilian brain. We have all these reptilian reactions. Hmm? And it's very useful to defend us in life, to survive. So this brain doesn't think. To think is a very uh, sophisticated process in the brain. But we have also this reptilian brain. And then it's very important for us to survive. Hmm? And then appear the mammalian brain. The mammalian brain is more complex. And also the mammals are more complex body. They are warm, they need affection, they need to be care. When the, mam the mammals are born, they need the care from the mother. The reptilian doesn't need the care from anybody. Hmm? They came into life and started to live and to walk and to live alone. The mammal needs more care. We care more depending on the caring of the affection. That is our mammalian brain here. And just very fast, I will show here the amygdala, because we will talk a little bit about this later, the amygdala. Hmm? The hypothalamus, in the brain appear the process of the memory, the hypothalamus, and the hippocampus. These are very complex structures in the, our limbic systems. Appear the endocrine, the hormones in the body. And the hormones, there are many different kinds of hormones, and control all our body. So this is our neuroendocrine brain, neuroendocrine brain. And what's happened in this reptilian brain? This brain becomes a world of pleasure and displeasure. Here appear the polarity of pleasure and displeasure. And that is very important for us because we are conditioned from pleasure and displeasure in our behaviors. Hmm? And what we see very, very fast how it comes. And then here we have the neocortex. Hmm? And all these three, three brains are connected. What happens here is in form here, and what happens here is in form in all the neocortex. Yeah? All these structures are very, very connected. Mm? So this is our mammalian brain, very deep in our brain, but it controls many, many behaviors of our brain. And we will see later how important it is to know this to be not dependent of our impulse, of our emotions. Because here, in this mammalian brain, we are process all the emotions. And we have to know how to care our emotions and how to be not dependent of our emotions and to be free in our, in our behavior, to be free. Hmm? And that is not easier to, to see. And Will we see very fast here why? Here in yellow is the dopamine pathway. I will I, I go more, more fast. And here is all our problem, problem, difficulty. Why? Because it's here where we process pleasure or displeasure. And all our life is conditioned from pleasure and displeasure. All our behaviors are pleasant or displeasant. Hmm? And we are reaching more and more pleasant and we are escaping from sorrow and from uh, suffering. 
Mm? And that's conditioned our behaviors. So, why? Because dopamine activates this part of the prefrontal lobes here, mm? and what it makes that we are motivated, the reward, motivation, we are very happy, mm? euphoria, mm? pleasure, euphoria, and we are very, uh, very fast to act. Mm? We are active. When the dopamine decreases, we are depressive. So we are searching, searching all the time pleasure to be happy. And that conditions our behaviors. Mm? So, both we talk about two different brain, the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. Mm? And both hemisphere process the, all the information in two different ways. The left hemisphere is linear, logical. It seems it has processor in series. Yeah? He's logical, he's digital. Mm? He can measure, can compare, can give a value. And here is where we process the verbal language in the left hemisphere. Our right hemisphere is artist, is emotion, is feeling, is empathy, is metaphor. Process the energy not in a digital way, in an analog way. So can find similar, some similar things in two things that are totally different. And this can be done because the process of this energies is different in the, is sequential, is linear, and is the phonological loop, is the verbal language. Here is process the verbal language. Can see all the details, details and details. Mm? Instead, the right hemisphere is irrational, is intuitive, is artist, is creative, is analogic, is intelligence. Our intelligence is in our right hemisphere, it's processed in our right hemisphere. It's not so uh, simple because both hemispheres share all the time the, 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 the process, the information. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not so simple. And it's holistic. This is most important. He can process, it, it can process time. So this brain lived only at the present time. It cannot think in future, it cannot think in past, cannot even say I, because it's, it is not separated from the universe, but the left hemisphere can say I. The left hemisphere can create. And to control all these different energies is our central executive in our, here, in our prefrontal lobes. Hmm? Our prefrontal lobes here, that is absolutely human. Hmm? That's appear with the Homo sapiens. And that is here where we are. Hmm? When we say I am feeling, I am, I think, I know, I will, all this happens in these prefrontal lobes. And there are many different areas processing different kinds of behaviors. I will go very fast, just make some example. For example, here, the area uh, number two is when we take a decision, when we make a choice. Number one is where we control all the impulse coming from, the, uh, from our emotions. Hmm? We can do what we, we cannot do what we want anytime, anywhere. We must to control our behaviors. And this, con, these behaviors are controlled in these prefrontal lobes. Mm? But of course, you are wonder, who am I? Mm? Who am I? 
I'm just a nervous system, or uh, I'm something more. <laughs> who, who am I? Where I am? <laughs> I'm sure that all of you are born, and yes, that is very nice, very boring also, but who I am? <laughs> I'm just a nervous system, neurons, information, process in one way, digital, another way, analog. Yeah. Who am I? Who are we? Hmm? And this question is possible because the nervous system becomes self-awareness. And that's the point of our talk. We arrive. It takes a long time, but we arrive. We, uh, we are self-awareness. And that is our huge possibilities to do many, many things like technology, science, verbal language, culture, but this self-awareness causes a separation from the rest of the universe. So we are separated from the rest of the universe. Huh? And that conditions our behaviors, because the self-awareness creates our self. Me, separated from you. You are different of me. But that happens only in a fragment of the brain. The rest of the brain is not separated. In the rest of the brain, we are only one universal family. We are one. So what we have to know how and when and where becomes one and when we can take a decision by ourselves. Hmm? Self aware. That's here is we started with the difficulty to the behaviors. Mm. And this becomes worse and worse and worse because our culture becomes more and more digital and we become every day more separated from the others. And this is the cause of all the war that we have now mm. because in each self has his own beliefs, own ideologies, own religions, and creates his own groups. And the different groups in all the planets are fighting, are killing and with violence. So we, we, we must to know our, what our brain process the, the, the information, because this war can be very, very, very tremendous for mankind and also for our planet. We can destroy everything. We can kill millions of millions of people in seconds. We create this technology, we create this culture, but we are not able to control all this technology, all this culture we have right now. is out of control. Mankind is out of control. And can be very, very, very dangerous, this, because this is a fact. It happens right now. Hmm? What is self awareness? We can see ourselves. It's a part of the brain who is fragmented and identify all the information in a center. And because this, we can name. We, can, we, we was able to create the verbal language, but every time we use the verbal language, every time we name, we are separated from the conditions. Hmm? And this self-awareness increase. Uh, mummy's fur has a little bit self-consciousness. Monkeys has a little more, big monkeys a little bit more, and the human, of course, we are self-awareness. Hmm? We can recognize ourselves. 
Mm? The fish, for example, cannot identify in a mirror that there is, that is not another fish. That is himself, sorry. For this fish, in the front is another fish, not him. Because this brain is too primitive. He's not our, he has not our self-awareness. Mm? The mummy's fur has a little bit, very, very little bit self-awareness. They can be, mm, to be self-aware. Eh? If you have a cat, a dog in your house, you can see that some self-awareness this uh, animal has, mm? but very, very, very little. Mm? Monkeys, they are a little more self-aware. Mm? And in the humans, self-awareness appear after two years. Before two years, the babies are not self-aware. If you put a baby in front of a mirror, in the beginning, he cannot uh, understand that is his, he, that is uh, himself. He thinks it is another baby in front. After the two years, he can recognize it himself. Hmm? He can see, oh, that is me. But that does appear not immediately. Hmm? And of course, we talk that the self-awareness works only in a fragment of our brain. The self-awareness fragmented our brain because the verbal language becomes um, have the supremacy of all the control of the rest of our brain. And uh, we are becoming too dependent of the words. It's not possible right now not to have a verbal language. We cannot communicate. We are totally isolated. But in the same time, this verbal language isolates us from the rest of the universe. So we must learn how to use the self-awareness. Hmm? Because the self-awareness creates also time, and we are depending on time, the future. Well, all of the focus of our attention are in the future. The bill I have to pay tomorrow, what I want to do tomorrow, what it happened to me yesterday, last year, and we don't focus the present time. Because the attention becomes too weak, weak to focus the present time. And because the digital process in the left hemisphere becomes in the last millennium very strong and dominates the rest of the brain. Hmm? It's very difficult for us to be in silent and just to be aware in the present time doing nothing. Hmm? We need to think, to do, to talk. Huh? We are depending of the verbal language. Why? Because in the very ancient brain, in our mammalian brain, where we talk about pleasure and unpleasure, to talk, for example, I will put an, an example. In the morning, we have the habits to make 15 phone calls. It's our habits. We found our family, our friends, in our works. And we, we need to talk to others, to tell. We need to talk. You, we dependent of the cell, cell, cellular, from the phone. And if we don't do these phone calls in the morning, for example, this is an example, we feel not good. Something is wrong, it's happening to, to me. So I need to, need, I need to phone call someone to talk. And when I finish the phone call, say, oh, I feel better. We are dependent from this, our dopamine reward, dopamine reward, conditions all our life, pleasure and displeasure. Eh? It's not only sex, pleasure and displeasure, it can be also be a phone call. Hmm? 
And where is process itself awareness? Before they think there were in three different areas of the brain, but in the last research, the scans indicate that self-awareness is a very diffuse patchwork of brain pathway. It's much more complex than we can think, the self-awareness. So this self-awareness is not only a part that, is, that it is self-aware, it's the, the result of the process of different areas in the neocortex. It's very, very complex. Hmm? So, how can the brain become one with the whole universe? Eh? Here, this can be the universe with all the galaxy, and all this information coming coming into the brain, the brain process all this information, and how can it become again a world of the whole universe, and to be one with the whole universe. Because our culture separates us from the universe. We are one separate from the universe. That was useful, very useful for the verbal language, for example. But now becomes dangerous, because create separate group in our mind can't, with different ideologies, different religions, different beliefs. And they are fighting and killing just because the belief is different. So we must consider this very, very carefully. When we talk about compassion, how the brain process this compassion, because right now, right here, compassion doesn't exist, maybe a little bit, but not more, sometimes, <laughs> for a while. And then suddenly we become separated again from the others. And that is, this conditions our behaviors. Hmm? What happened during meditation? I will fast because I'm going too long and I don't want to borrow you. During meditations happens something very particular in the brain. The brain processes the information totally different. The electrical activity from the left hemisphere shifts to the, to the right hemisphere. So that shows that the right hemisphere is more active during meditation. Hmm? And that makes sense, because everybody who has meditated once feel this beautiful uh, sensations to, to be one with the external environment. Hmm? But not, not only the electrical activity shift to the right hemisphere, different areas are very active during meditation. And these areas in the brain active during meditation are appears only during meditation. And also all the endocrine systems change during meditations, and also all the immune systems change during meditation. So it's a change of all of our brain, of our nervous systems, and of all of our body. Mm. And when we talk and say that we activated the right part of the brain, we are saying that we are activating the brain that can be in contact with the others, that it is empathic, can have compassion. Mm. Will we see a little more deeply what is compassion? Compassion, this word, has passions that in uh, Greek, uh, pathos means suffering, sorrow, passion, pathos in Greek, hmm? sorrow. So to feel the sorrow of the other, to share 
the suffering of the others. Uh, and here we can see unicity when we are one with the whole universe. And here we can say I separated from the others. And during meditation what happens that the left hemisphere becomes more calm, verbal language becomes more calm, so the thoughts comes slow and slow and slow. Hmm? And we are more aware of other energy coming into our brain. So we're, we are awakening this compassion during the meditation. Hmm? We are bridging the brain in this time. Here, there, this is a metaphor. This is our left hemisphere, cold logic, hmm? can judge, can name, can compare, can create a value. Hmm? It's what we are doing all the time. We are conditioned by the values. More expensive, less expensive, more value, less value. Today is more, less. Hmm? And we are uh, giving judgment all the time. Every time we judge, we give a judgment. We are separated from the other brain here. Hmm? This brain that is just artist, no time living in the present time. Living with the emotions, with sensations, with the unicity. This is a very schematical image because what's happening in the brain is not like this, just is to make it more simple to understand. Eh? And this is the bridge here, the bridge. The corpus callosa, we, I mentioned the, the corpus callosa when we start to talk, yeah? you remember, the bridge between the both hemispheres. And that is happens during meditations. Here becomes more weak, if you want, and here becomes more strong. Hmm? And during this state of meditations, what happens in the brain? The brain becomes silent because the phonological loop is not so active. Hmm? And in consequence, we are not so separated from the rest of the universe. We are in peace. Because in the present time exists only peace. We are not in conflict in the present time. It's the thought who creates time, who creates the conflict. What it is, what it should be, what it was, what it should, it sh it should be. Hmm? We are all the time with this kind of thought. It is like this, but it should be like that. So we are in conflict. But where we are in the present time, what has happened is perfect because it's what has happened. We are not in conflict because it's what it is. Hmm? We are connected also with the whole immensity, with the whole universe. And the brain becomes very powerful. It's creative because he's in contact in the present time. He's not escaping from the present time. Hmm? And he's very aware. So he, it can use all the intelligence to resolve a difficulty, a problem, etc. in the present time. Hmm? So focus the intelligence and now our talk becomes more and more in the theosophical field, no? So, and why? We consider the brain conditioned, we consider all the function of the brain conditional, mechanical, yes. So can a mechanical organs create intelligence? That is a very philosophical question. So, if the brain can be intelligence because 
it is in contact with the intelligence. So what is intelligence? That is a question to consider very, very, very seriously, very deep. What is intelligence? Hmm? Can be the effect of a cause? Hmm. It's difficult to say that because it's a consequence of a cause. This cause must be also intelligence. So it cannot be the consequence of a cause. It is a cause. It is an absolute. Intelligence is an absolute. Oh, you can consider this, hmm? of course, is to make a discussion. But the brain cannot create the intelligence. We believe that we are intelligence and the Homo sapiens create this intelligence and so on, so on, so on. But uh, if we look at very carefully, very seriously, it's not so clear. Hmm? So now mankind is in difficulty. Can follow the impulse. This is the heart. But here the heart is not meaning our deep feeling. Heart here is showing our impulse, our emotional impulse. Okay? So have to follow our impulse or have to take another way with intelligence. Here is the brain, but either is showing only the logical thought. It's just the discernment, the prefrontal lobes. We can decide that is good, that is wrong. Yeah? So now mankind have to know very deep, very well, how what has happened into the brain and the comprehension of all the impulse hmm, and to take an intelligent decision in each moment. Hmm. And this is another sentence that we can also uh, consider from the neuroscience and also from the uh, theosophical thought. Love is without a motive. And it's true. From the neuroscience, the motive is conditioned. Pleasure and displeasure. And if the love is conditioned by pleasure or displeasure, well, it's difficult to affirm that it is true love. Hmm? So love perhaps must be an absolute also, like intelligence. Hmm? So how can the brain focus love? That is another question. Hmm? We talk about compassion and we talk also that compassion has the word pathos, sorrow. Is empathy who can feel what happens in the other brain. And empathy has also the word pathos. Empathy, pathy, pathos, sorrow. To feel the sorrow, the suffering of the other brain. Hmm? To, feel, to feel the pain of the others. Hmm? Sorrow, pain, suffering, means the Greek word pathos. Eh? So empathy, and empathy is ethics. Hmm? Why? Because if we don't feel that we are, we produce a damage to others or to something, hmm? we can destroy the whole universe and we became what happens now, right now in the world. We can destroy the whole planets and we can destroy the whole mankind we can, because don't, we don't feel the sorrow of the others. And if we can feel the sorrow of the others, we can don't have an ethic behavior. So ethics and empathy are the same word, if you want. Hmm? Ethics is much that moral values. And also we can see from the neuroscience, we have seen the value is created by the left hemisphere, who can compare, can measure, can give a value. And what is good in one culture is not good in other cultures. Hmm? So it's very relative. Good and bad are very relative in every, in every culture. 
is what is correct or incorrect how we can see the, the word ethics. Eh? If we are causing a damage to someone or something, that is wrong. Everything that causes damage to someone or something is wrong. And it's not ethic. Hmm? And now I will finish fast because it takes too long and it's very boring, the subject, I know. <laughs> How we can feel this empathy? Well, there are specialized ne neurons in the brain who cause mirror neurons who are showing what is happening in our brains all the time. These mirror neurons was discovered recently, some years ago, and the scientists have seen that these mirror neurons are all the time recreated in our brain what is happens in the our brain. Not only the thought, not only the feelings, not only the emotions, also the movements. Hmm? So what happened in one brain is happened in the other brain. But we are not conscious of this. Because we don't focus the other. We are focused all the time in ourselves. Hmm? So the mirror neurons, that is another subject to consider very close in our subject neuroscience and compassion, the mirror neurons. Hmm? can observe what is happens in the other persons. So the brain is able to know exactly what is happening in, other, in the other brains. Hmm? But we not consider this because we are separate from their brain. Hmm? We are not in the unicity. We are in a duality all the time. Hmm? And here is where, where the, these uh, mirror neurons are in the cortex, in the neocortex. So what is happening in one brain is happening in the same times in the other brain. Hmm? So what, have, what is our responsibility? Because we create this culture, we create this world, all this violence. It's the homo sapiens who, who has created all this different religions, beliefs, ideologies. Hmm? So we are responsible, we, we have the responsibility to do something right now. And the new culture maybe is not to lose our digital abilities because create this technology and this technology is wonderful and must we go on all the time, the technology. We go to the moon, to Mars, to other planets, and we go to maybe to another galaxy once. Hmm? So technology, science must go on. Go, go. But love, we make weak, very weak, the part of the brain who has the possibility to be empathic, to have the compassion. Hmm? And here is a cut of the brain. In yellow is the left hemisphere. And you, you can see that it's much bigger. Hmm? Here is much bigger. This part of the brain is much bigger of the contral homolateral areas. This is the right hemisphere and this is the left hemisphere. And here is where our phonological loops is. Here is where we process the verbal language. It becomes bigger. In the millennium, we, with the neuroplasticity, we are all the time modeling our brain, transforming our brain. And the verbal language, we use too much the verbal language, and this part become very strong and dominates our life. What we should do, maybe, is to make bodybuilding to have more muscle in this part of the brain who are in contact with the other. Bodybuilding in the right side of the brain to have more compassion, to increase. Because in the last years, they have done very interesting research in meditation, in neuroscience, 
And the sciences have seen that not only meditation changed behavior and the person became more altruist, and that was uh, confirmed in the, the uh, laboratory of psychologist's laboratory, the person becomes more altruist with more compassion. Hmm? Also, the neuroscience have seen that the brain was changing. Increased gray matter in some areas of the prefrontal lobes. The areas who are activated during meditation increase, so they are more strong. Increase the connections and decrease in some areas, like the amygdala. You remember the amygdala? Should you? Amygdala is a very ancient structure of the brain, who is very primitive and it's just to survive. Creates anxiety, irritability, violence, and this is useful if you need to save in front of danger, to react immediately with, with violence, of course, to save us. But just in very, very uh, particular case, not all the time. But what happened right now, that the amygdala is all the time very irritated, and we are very irritated. And we have reaction all the time. Mm. So we must increase bodybuilding, it's just a metaphor, the other part of the brain who has this empathy and can be in silence and can be in peace and can be one with the universe. Mm. And now this is a challenge that I propose to you, not only to breach the both brain, so the bridging neuroscience and tradition, can we bridge what it was say in the past with the different traditions, like the Buddhist traditions, and to read what it was say with the key of the neuroscience? Is this possible? Hmm? It's a challenge. Maybe we can do. Hmm? Buddha talked very much about the process of the consciousness, of the awareness, the process of the mind. And maybe we can make an, an uh, uh, to make uh, analogy, you say analogy, with the neuroscience and what Buddha have said, no? Hmm? The neuroscience say that the activating process that makes that we are aware. Hmm? We are aware when the neocortex is activated. And all the bits of information can be, be conscious, becomes conscious. Hmm? And it's a process. We have seen that it's a process. But in the tradition have seen that also, for example, Vinyana is the process of the consciousness. Hmm? who is receiving all the bits of information for the circumstance, hmm? and then Sanya, that is perceptions, every circumstance is classified, measure, evaluate, and give a judgment that is positive, that is negative. Hmm? And then also the same circumstance has a feeling, a sensation, make pleasure or not pleasure. Hmm? And Sankara, a reaction. Because in the next circumstance, I have immediately a reaction. And maybe we can bridge what it was say in the past, in the different tradition, and reading with, with the neuroscience, what the neuroscience are showing how our nervous systems works. Maybe it's just, I propose this. It's a challenge for us to make this research. Can we understand the whole traditions with a scientist lecture, a scientist reading? Hmm? So we have many challenges to do, and it's too late. The talk takes too time. I apologize. I'm very sorry. And, well, just to finish with this, uh, it seems that Buddha says, no matter how hard was the past, you can always bring again, begin again, so start again. Mm. We have suffered too much of mankind. 
we are suffering too much, we are causing too much sorrow, but we can start again. Hmm? And that is what in science we call resilience. To affront all the frustrations, all our suffering, and to give a positive action. Hmm? Resilience. Eh? It's our ability to recover quickly from stress and misfortune, to adapt properly to new circumstances. Hmm? To maybe we must to improve our resilience and to be stronger in our inside world, to be more in peace and not to react so immediately with aversion or addiction. Going behind pleasure and escaping from suffering. Maybe we can become stronger and to be more in peace. And well, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much.